Yeah. We are. It did not change it. Very little. I choose you. <coughs> Press the B. The B button on the podium. That's where you want to go. Nice. Welcome. Uh, my name is Evan Field. This is. Introduce yourself. Chris. Okay. And welcome to our multimedia sensory experience on Francis Bacon. Or. No, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> the life and times of Bacon Man. <laughs> Frankie is born. Francis Bacon, Frankie as we'll call him, was born on January 22nd, 1561, in London, England, just across the pond. He was too sick to go to school, so tutors taught him at his house, which probably looked something like this. You can't see it's a half spelled out bacon. <laughs> Frankie went to college when he was 12. Very smart kid. <clears throat> when he was at school, he realized that there were a lot of things wrong with the world. England was ruled by a queen and noble lords and ladies. They had lots of bacon, but most people didn't have any. The people with a lot of bacon could boss around the other people. Frankie didn't think this was right. <clears throat> Rise of the Bacon Man. Frankie thought that ordinary, Peter, ordinary people needed someone to look out for them. The world needed a hero, and Frankie decided he would be that hero. He became Bacon Man. At the end. Life as Bacon Man. Frankie served in many roles of government. He started as a representative from different towns. Soon, he had a reputation as a nice guy, worried about the common man, just like you and me. But during this time, during his time in government, he started writing a lot. <laughs> Frankie wrote a lot about philosophy. We will talk more about his philosophy when it's nap time. Frankie also wrote about how you learn things from your senses. Your eyes, your ears, your mouth, your touch, and your smell. For instance, you can feel warm, crunchy bacon with your fingers. You can look at the bacon and see its shiny goodness. You can eat the bacon and taste how yummy it is. When you add up all these things, your senses tell you. You can understand that bacon is good. <laughs> Frankie also wrote about science. He said that you should do a science, you should do experiments before you make ideas. If someone tells you bacon is bad, you should perform an experiment. Because I'm probably wrong. <laughs> you would get some bacon, then you would cook said bacon, and you would eat it. Once you did this, you could prove the other person wrong, because the bacon was yummy, and you had just used science. This was important because it showed Aristotelianism was wrong. <laughs> what is Aristotelianism, you ask? That philosophy was made up a long time ago by a guy named Turtle. Turtle fo focused on specific situations instead of one big theory of science. As the Bacon Man, Frankie continued to rise through the ranks of the political world. King James I became king. He liked what Frankie did, so he made him Lord Chancellor, a very important position. Now, Bacon Man was in charge of all the courts in England. He made sure that the courts were fair to rich and poor people alike. So if someone stole your toy and you wanted it back, and even if that person who stole it was rich and powerful, thanks to Bacon, you would get your toy back. <clears throat> Frankie had always liked nice things, don't we all? When he became Lord Chancellor, he bought lots of things. Nice bacon stuff. <laughs> to buy all these nice things, he had to borrow money. He got kicked out of his job because he owed too much money. A few years later, Frankie was out in a snowstorm. He was really cold. 
Suddenly, he thought that if you could keep bacon cold, it would last much longer. He stayed out in the snowstorm to test his experiment. He got so cold, he caught pneumonia and died. <laughs> Don't worry, kids. Frankie only faked his death. Then he flew to his bacon cave. Now he watches over all the children in the world. If you are a good bacon man, bacon man will come out in the night and leave a steaming pile of bacon on your doorstep. <laughs> Frankie is well known for inventing a way of looking at the world in terms of constants. Things that don't change, and variables, things that do change. A man can then use this view to set up an experiment and observe how the changing variable affects the result. His idea evolved into what we call the scientific method. There were main, four main steps to Frankie's scientific method. One, observe. You use your eyes and see what you know. Two, create an idea from the observation. This is known as a hypothesis, if you want a big fancy word for it. Three, you test the idea. And then you look at your data and you draw a conclusion. <clears throat> Using logic and reasoning, Frankie said we would learn by analyzing nature and the world around us. Because of this, Frankie is known as an empiricist, someone who relies on his senses to observe and learn. Frankie is known as the father of experimental science. <clears throat> epistemology. Epistemology is a big fancy way of saying the study of knowledge and nature. Frankie thought people were not blank slates, but had what he called idols in their nature that affected their view of the world. There are four main idols. There is the idol of tribal flaws of human nature. Idol of the cave, individual preconceptions. Idol of the marketplace, being confused by words. <clears throat> Idol of the theater, lies taught by people in authority. <clears throat> His scientific method was aimed at helping people find out things about the world through facts and advanced human knowledge. <clears throat> Metaphysics. Since Frankie was a scientist uh, who liked to do experiments, he didn't care that much about questions of things beyond the physical. He was more concerned with what people could learn from the world around them. Axiology is the study of what is right and what is wrong, and of what is worth a lot of money. Frankie thought everyone should be treated nicely. When he wrote the book The New Atlantis, he was writing about a utopian society, an ideal society, where everyone got along, and money wasn't important, and no one pulled your hair on the playground. <clears throat> Political views. Frankie thought a lot of, this, of the same types of things as another guy, John Locke. Frankie was a lawyer, and he thought the law should, protect, should work to protect a man's life, his property, or his toys, and his reputation. So you don't want people going out and saying mean things about you in the at the cafeteria, so Frankie was against that. <clears throat> Frankie the Bacon Man was so influential that his works changed the way other people looked at the world. Bacon was a pioneer in empiricism. Empiricism, if you remember, is just a big fancy word of saying that knowledge comes from experience. The way Bacon looked at the world was revolutionary, and he is one of the first modern philosophers. <clears throat> Bacon Man was so smart that his ideas in view of the world inspired a movement called the Enlightenment, where a bunch of other smart guys like John Locke, Isaac Newton, and Voltaire made advances in math, science, and philosophy. <clears throat> now, impact on you. Bacon Man's ideas set off a wave of scientific progress that was unparalleled. The scientific progress of the 17th, 18th, 19th, 20th, and 21st century is all thanks to Bacon Man's ideas. Without him, you would be playing with wooden blocks instead of shooting angry birds at pigs on your shiny new iPad. <laughs> Bibliography? But just wait, it's not over. So we uh, we're going to do, yeah, we're going to do a song next. And uh, originally, Tim was going to come in with his uh, drum set. It was going to be like dancers and stuff. But we're just going to do with what we have for now. And uh, the song is called uh, the uh, Scientific Method. So uh, we're going to.
we'll sing the song. Francis Bacon was a dude. He came up with something new. A couple steps so we could learn. Shape a better point of view. Called the scientific method. Called it the scientific method. Take one. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take one. <laughs>